This movie has more big action set pieces than we've ever done before. Drop them! Drop them! We wanted to surprise by creating new action, more original big scenes that you've never seen before. There's a shark attack, which is one of the most entertaining sequences ever filmed for a pirate's movie. The ghost sharks actually came from Jeff Nathanson. It was in the script that they got attacked by ghost sharks. That was one of the great fun sequences to design. And also, it reminds us a little bit about our previous film, Contiki, because we had a lot of sharks in that movie. But they are, of course, not ghost sharks, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess we're shark, shark experts or something. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Kill this parro. Salazar has control over these lifeless sharks, and they bring them back to life and send them out. The idea was that these ghost sharks were almost like like missiles that were launched from the ship. So they were pushed off the side of the boat like torpedoes, but that they fire directly towards our heroes. And they send them on a rampage towards my direction, which is unpleasant. For the sharks itself, we'd use various breeds, actually. We settled on one hammerhead and two great whites. So essentially, there's a group of three that are released into the water. In the beginning of the design process, we wanted to kind of follow up on that, you know, decayed flesh and visible bones and skeletons, you know, as a mashup. The sharks were essentially fully realized, real objects on set, and then we did digital takeovers of them. We ended up breaking their jaws, having their jaws dangle, slime coming out of the mouth, and then we added flies around them to make sure that it had that added sense of disgust. We just really wanted to combine this sort of menacing appearance to like a real, believable, convincing behavior of them underwater. We did a lot of animation studies to try to figure out how broken you can make something look and still keep it threatening. If you have a shark that's been dead and that has missing fins or broken fins and only chunks of flesh here and there, it's not going to be as elegant as a shark would be if you were to encounter it in nature. Shark. In the chase with the ghost sharks where they're pursuing the, the rowboat, we shot part of that in a location where we were adding the island to the background. Then we had a small water tank location with a rowboat on a gimbal for direct interaction with people in water. We then did another environment where we shot it in a blue screen stage in an interior. So within that sequence, you might be cutting from a location to a tank shot to a blue screen set, all in a matter of a few seconds. And our job was to try to make sure that we were creating the CG water and the, the CG ocean extensions around it to match the live action location well enough that it blends. We kind of have the best of both worlds. We have the digital portion at hand, and we have the practical stuff that was shot and set. In each of these shots, it's always a combination. It depends on what works best. Pirates franchise has carried the supernatural and mythological elements right through the first one, so it wouldn't be a Pirates movie without it.